All right, welcome to Megabyte Studios. I'm Jesse Corey. I'm Dan Armand. We are the co-founders of One Time Run, and today we have two special guests on the show with three extra special guests. Right now we have Rula David and Holly Johnson, and they are the curators of our upcoming show, Motion, at Spotlight Detroit. We also have Ash and John here today to talk about their artwork, Tony Hooligan and Ed Ehrman. So let's stay tuned. Check it out. What are you guys up to? Rula, Holly, tell us about this show. Hold on, let me put this dog down real quick. Um, so, <laughs> so Jesse, so Holly and I had been kind of talking about doing a large group show since mid last year. Um, we have been really wanting to show a variety of different artists from Detroit, anywhere from emerging to middle career to kind of just creative people that come and engage in our space. Um, many of the artists we've participated and we've collaborated with, whether it be murals in the market, whether it be on one time run, releasing art prints, whether it be through commissioning murals from them, or just working on different like art expressions. And so we were really excited to get everybody under the same like roof on the same room in the same gallery. Um, the work is coming together and it's starting to look really amazing. Yeah, we originally reached out to a huge list of artists expecting like a pretty good number to get back wanting to participate and it ended up being like 70 plus artists wanting to so it became this giant group show and we're really excited about it so the art started coming in today and we have uh, Ash here who's uh, put a piece in the show um, walk us through like you know this idea of motion and creating artwork around this theme um, yeah here uh, here you have your piece here Ding, ding. Um, well yeah thanks for having us be a part of it um, Obviously, it's great to be included with, like, you know, our community and family just in a show to really see, like, how we all sort of, like, coalesce uh, visually in the end. But, um, yeah, John and I uh, run a party called Hot to Death. It's the <laughs> longest running monthly in the city of Detroit. And a lot of – John takes a lot of digital photos. I mean, you must have how many at this point? Like <laughs> Over 100,000. Yeah. Wow. Archive, um, yeah. Over the past 15 years. But um, I typically go through and – I'm a little more precious about it. I do a lot of like Polaroids, instant photography during it, which isn't like my main main creative practice, but I thought it was a really good fit for the show with motion and dance and movement and a uh, community kind of as the overarching theme. So I want to include a number of Polaroids from uh, the past few years that I've taken that were really uh, focused on the body, really focused on detail. Um, just really kind of got like the spirit of what was happening and what's often lost in like a sea of a lot of bodies so it's kind of nice to have those little like snapshots of of um of clothing of of twirling of <laughs> of hair flips all that <laughs> stuff so um i thought that that's, that's like a good, good fit to <laughs> sort of bring together you know what was important to me and what i thought was a good fit for what spotlight like knows and does so well too oh. and have you ever are, is the piece for sale it is for sale. And have you ever sold the Polaroids? I sell Polaroids every once in a while. Oh, you do. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is uh, not completely unique, but uh, b but pretty unique. It's to unusual. Put this yeah, yeah. It, it's like the, the collection is, it's all archived online um, on our website um, just over the past, you know, 15 years. Um, but every once in a while, I'll, I'll get a request for one that like really stood out to somebody either because they're in it or just because they were really moved by it. But it's it's not something, I mean, because it's one of one. You can't make any more. <laughs> so I'm a little protective of them. So I was happy to be able to choose some for this show that I thought were a good fit. And what Spotlight has been able to accomplish with Rula's curation and is to create a space where you're an artist, but your art is so multidimensional. Mm -hmm. You guys really embody that through music, yeah. design, art, and just a creative spirit. Can you talk about how that, how you utilize all of the elements of your creativity to create, you know, kind of a commoditized piece of art, something for an art show? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> well, it's... Heavy I'm hitting questions. Yeah, right? that, that, yeah, awesome. we're doing heavy lifting here. Well, I mean, honestly, it's like, um, a lot of what we do as artists and as hot to death just comes from um, our inability to just choose to do one thing. Um, I know you guys relate to that. It's like, there's just, there's so much to do. There's so much to create. There's so, I mean, with this podcast you guys are doing, there's always new ways to add, um, add more to our visual landscape and add more to our archive and um, add more to like the visual history of Detroit that people are going to hopefully look back on in 20 years now and be like, oh, my, remember that show with like 
these 65 like sick artists and like here's what they're doing now um but yeah I mean the way that we bring it all together is it, it's sort of like John and I are good partners and that we do things really differently but we have the same end goal in mind so we we sort of are able to uh I don't want to say finish each other's sentences. That's a little cheesy, but um, but you, you, you but you know what I mean. Where it's like we 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 help each other get to the finish line. Like it's like you. The best part about like a partnership, you guys know, is like um, having somebody do the parts that you're like not quite sure how to get there. So you know, I'm I'm really focused on sort of like the preciousness of of how to death. I'm really focused on the the fabrication of it, um, the the more fine art aspect, the the copywriting aspect. Um, the marketing aspect, whereas John is, I mean, the the heartbeat of like the the music of what we do, of of the the archiving and photography of what we do, the graphic design of what we do. I mean, we have over 250 um, uh, album cover flyers, um, a really special one of which is John's piece for this show. Um, so it's just kind of we we get to going on what we're making and check in with each other, and at the end it kind of parts of it come out as a product but parts of it just come out of as ephemera and if you were there you you got to be a part of that product and if you weren't well we'll we'll probably be back next month so you can (laughs) try again again. (laughs) and if you're not familiar with hot to death uh i remember when you guys celebrated your 10-year anniversary and you put all of the party flyers together and there's these great iterations of like some iconic albums and maybe little underground albums that you've refreshed in your own likeness yeah. in your own brand and it was really um quite stunning to see that put together as 10 years so now you're into 12 15 15 wow. oh, okay <laughs> so last, what's t- nice. 15 last october what is 20 gonna look like um god uh well you know we we have um, some exciting things that we're working on this next year but um i mean we we want to continue to grow hot to death into a a space that well, I mean, even just since moving to Marble, we can include more people, like, mm-hmm. you know, so it's like, um, it was never meant to be, like, the, the John and Ash so- show, so hopefully by the time 20 comes, it's like we'll have a lot more people on the regular roster, we'll have uh, more definitive spaces, we'll have um, more work, like, on the record, and more more officially printed and produced, and just more, more special occasions, but more, I, I mean, I feel like we haven't changed but we've also grown so I feel like 15 doesn't look super different than 10 in a way it doesn't even feel super different from the very first party we did Mm. um it always feels very much like of its moment and I kind of call it like nostalgia in real time um so I hope (laughs) it's like on one hand like oh I hope 20 is bigger but I'm just like is bigger necessarily the goal like I just always want to feel special it's not always better it's like and it, it's always good, and it's always robust. I'm always happy with all the people that come, and I just you you want to grow personally, but you always want it to feel kind of like, all right, this is exclusive for everybody that wants it, and they they found us, and that feels good. Awesome. So hopefully that's what twenty does. And uh, <laughs> you know, at the motion show, they can take a piece of that home with them, which is kind they, of a really unique component of they what you can do. Can. Yeah, and I'm really um, thankful to be a part of that because I was like, man, like there's so many. What a great prompt. First of all, it's like that that could mean so much. And I've seen a few of the artists like previewing like how they took that in. Um, so to be able to finally say like, oh, like if I'm going to share these uh, Polaroids in a way that um, can finally be for sale, can finally be uh, consumed in a different or more rare way. I'm really happy to be doing it with you guys in this show. Awesome. It's like oh. the, the best fit oh. for it. So, so, so thanks for having me. Both. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for coming in. We're going to bring in our next guest, Tony Hooligan. Um, Thanks, we'll, guys. We'll see Thank you guys, you. Uh, see you, you know, at the Friday. show on Friday. Yeah, I'll yeah. be here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, Rilla, you know, this is exactly what Motion was meant to do and to encompass artists that are not necessarily a traditional fine artist. And what, how does that make you feel seeing yeah. how it coming together like I that? I love it. I mean, one of the things that, you know, we didn't mention in the beginning was that, um, you know, the concept of the group show. Group shows are always, you know, sometimes conceptually they can be very generic. Sometimes conceptually they can be so esoteric, like where it's so hard to wrap your brain around it. And so what we wanted to do was create a concept that gave a sense of inspiration to the artist and inspiration to the consumer of the art. So 
we said motion and what is motion you know it was about how do we how are we moving into 2023 together how are we doing this in a way that inspires each other and motion could mean a million different things it could be a a, a grass blade it could be a person dancing it could be a move a political or a social activist movement it could be i mean i can't wait for you guys to hear tony's explanation of motion because i was like when he brought it today when he came in i was like what and then he explained to me i was like oh my god that's like so amazing and so just seeing how all of these different people from different backgrounds that are detroiters that really live and work and breathe detroit how they interpreted what motion meant to them i think is what's going to make the show the most incredible yeah, well I mean, tony you welcome can, you can be as subjective yeah. with that or yeah. as literal as, as you literal want. or and, as abstract and it's and a, a beautiful part of it is there are common themes that just are existing naturally with, for, with the artists. So it's just like... There's like literal runners in the show. So there's like two of them. One's a potato running, <laughs> <laughs> which is Kelly Golden. Phil Simpson's got a runner. Like they took it so literal. Mm -hmm. And then some people just had like, you know, some abstract pieces that really spoke to them. So um, yeah, it's looking so fun. And the show will be up till mid-April, just as a heads up. So it'll be up for at least two, two plus months. So we get a chance to kind of get it together. Yeah. Well, let's welcome Tony Hool again. Hi, We've Tony. Welcome. You're <laughs> We've worked together for years. Uh, <laughs> murals, art shows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, thanks for coming in. Uh, yeah, tell, tell us about your experience. And neighbor. With and oh, neighbor. Right. And hey, neighbor. family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so walk us through, you know, motion. What was your kind of genesis? What were you talking to Rula about earlier today? Um, so speaking about being literal, I am one of those very literal persons. So I would. So for the concept of this show, I didn't I didn't want to be too literal, but I want to abstractly attach myself to the concept of motion through something like my past. Um, for me personally, I've been using my artwork to not only learn more about myself, but more about my culture, where I come from, my people, my, my history, my family. Um, and something that that I've done since I was young um, is use like texture altering pomades to um, change the surface texture of my hair. Uh, one of the things that I used to do before I had locks was brush it until I got 360 waves. Um, if y'all don't know what 360 waves are, that's... Um, <laughs> It's the effect that your hair gives when it's in an organized chaos and the light reflects and gives a shimmer that it looks like ocean waves. So for this concept, I kind of wanted to go with motion sickness um, and I painted. So that's why you're not very literal. You're like <laughs> <the opposite. Yeah. laughs> I know, right? I was like, all right, all right, all right I got, I got to. Um, so I, I wanted to use one of my, uh, my characters, one of my uh, inner children to essentially vocalize what this what the look of motion looks like and not only hair but also in the black culture um and what it means to me um if you go to any black person they know what waves are they know what it means to have seasickness if your waves look too good you feel me so i felt like it was something that not only is adaptable to the people around me but uh, a learning opportunity for others that may not know you know exactly what the importance of hairstyle means to uh, black culture I love that. I, I, again, uh, Tony's saying how literally he is, but <laughs> he's, he, the thing that I think about is that he's not because we did a mural, um, what was it, two, last year or two years ago? And it was for Lu a Louisiana gumbo place, yeah. right? And I was like, Tony, you know, let's think about something Southern. Let's like whatever, you know, we're sitting there shooting ideas. And then he sends me the sketch of two pink alligators dancing, and then you guys know from Tony, say it. <laughs> my Detroit players, you feel pink. me? Big, big, uh, big pink. pinky, uh, whoop, my bad. Pink gators, my Detroit players. Tim's for my hooligans in Brooklyn, um, which is honestly an ode to living in Brooklyn. I used to live in Brooklyn. Um, it's something that I picked up. I feel like I'm a Brooklyn Knight uh, a little bit at heart, if not a Detroiter first. Um, so I wanted to play, again, not only in something that related to my past, but also played into the homage of Louisiana Creole Gumbo. Um, the scenery is actually a depiction of an uh, old jazz band. Um, I actually got the photo I could show you guys too as well. It um, was just like, when I saw it, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you just like put all the pieces together in the most pop culture, but throwback away. It was just incredible. And the, the gentleman that owned it was like an older African-American gentleman. Um, he's, he owns multiple restaurants. He gave us this full tour. He fed us. He was so nice. But at first, he's like, 
I don't get it, guys. And I'm like, um, because you might not know, you might be a little a generationally away from what this is to our generation because it's a yeah. very important line and it's a very important cultural reference for Detroit from an iconic hip hop star. Yeah, so I and, love and that. I think he also uh, we went back to visit him. Um, and he was surprised because a lot of people had came they knew to what it was. his spot yeah, and they knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think, again, it's always a learning lesson where you're creating, and mm. I, I like to find opportunities to do that. Well, that's really great. Uh, you know, when we first met, you were living, I think, in Los Angeles, right? And yes. so, you know, walk us through, like, your transition, obviously, Brooklyn. You're from Detroit, Brooklyn, L.A., mm -hmm. and then kind of coming back home and, and becoming a really important part of our community here um, because of the intention that you gave to to being here and being and participating. But walk us through this, like, w you know, moving back. How did that feel? And, and what what have you learned in the last what is it, eight, eight or nine years? Man, um, I like to I like to look at myself as like a, a, a street contemporary artist. So, like, I utilize m my environment to. Uh, to teach myself graffiti, um, mural, street art, things of that nature. But the the moment I came to see you guys, I think my life took the turn that I wanted to I wanted it to have when I left high school. I jumped right into being an artist. I got right into painting on walls. I got to drawing on things. Um, and it really encouraged me to not only learn more about my art practice, but to learn more about my community and outside of my community and what more I could bring into it. Um, and it's not just myself, it's, 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 it's a unit that surrounds me. So it's a community of others that we work together and kind of just share resources to not only enlighten one another in our skills and crafts, but to share space as well. Um, space being, you know, our neighborly space next door. Yes. Um, and, you know, just really, really using this opportunity to, to, to use the practice as a means of communication. And um, I think in the last, eight years with being back I think I've learned I think I've learned more about my history than I've chosen to to I think learn unintentionally on my own um and you know that's something that I didn't think mm -hmm. I would do um mm -hmm. at, at least that's at like this scale yeah yeah that's what's up. I learned a lot um but I'm, I, I think I, I think this this show itself is a great start to this year to being able mm -hmm. to just not only explore um, a new style that I'm working with, but also explore new mediums as well um, and find out which ways I can communicate through different mediums um, and, you know, share with the world. That's what's up. I love that. Yeah, that's really cool to hear that story. You know, well, I think our community is so robust here, our art community, the mural community, the mural economy, if you will. Um, how does... Walk us through, like, what does it feel like to participate in that community? And what does it feel like to just have all of this camaraderie around walls and art shows? And it's like there's a real core of, and I think in any art community, there's different groups of people that kind of um, attract to each other and spend time together and create together. But the nucleus of the mural painters is pretty broad, <laughs> you know? Um, and so there, and it's a lot of, co-learning and and aspiring each other to, to work towards you know just you know doing something great and i know rula and holly have wor worked on a ton of murals throughout the city um you know for for either for the the quick and loans project or you know for any of the other projects that we do whether it's murals in the market but what does it what does it mean what does it feel like to be a part of detroit's mural artist community and and, and i mean what's it feel like from the inside out um, I, I had to say it feels like a oneness. Um, it, it isn't anything that abstracts that makes me feel like a, a needle in a haystack. Um, I hang out with these muralists on a, on occasions, like frequently. Uh, I was just with Shifi and uh, Phil and Rick. You feel me? We we not only understand one another, but we also give room for one another to grow at our practices. We don't use it as an opportunity to oh let's let's always make something together. We want to make we want to make that opportunity unique and rare for others to be able to experience it, as well as, you know, teaching one another. Um, I've learned a lot from my peers as it goes sheaf and um, feel as far as their experiences on jobs go um, and working with different corporations and being able to share that knowledge within this community is something that is um, valuable, but also priceless at the same time, because 
you can't you can't get this information on the internet. You feel me? I can't mm-hmm. I can't Google you know experiences on a mural site. Uh, how hot is it outside? What do I need to wear? Or right things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, you get those sharing stories with your community and comrades. And for that, for me, it's it's a part of the journey and a part of the process. And I don't like to rush those things. So, um, for anyone that's looking to get into the 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 world of mural arts or just expressing yourself on buildings and walls, I just encourage you just to start small and just constantly repetitively grow yourself uh, through consistency. You know, that I love that because that's exactly what I tell people when they want to start painting murals. It's the same exact advice. <laughs> oh, you remember? <laughs> Stick with Just do it yeah, a lot. Keep doing just do it. it. Keep a lot. doing it. Ask and just keep on doing it. I, yep. I think that's why, yeah. like, Detroit is such a special place for it, too, because other places have, like, vibrant mural communities where people are painting a lot of murals, but – here there is that like camaraderie and that yeah, oneness 100%. and people helping each other you know that i feel like a lot of other places you get competition and yeah. you know I, I just think it's pretty amazing to see what you guys have done and how you've come together and you know i was just telling it's tony inspiring. yeah i was just telling tony i was like i watched you got you and she and phil paint this painting on the internet and like literally <laughs> within a day i saw it in a restaurant when i went to go eat at you know what i mean it's just like things manifesting itself in like certain places and it was a very fine dining restaurant that, mm. like, typically, I, I was really impressed by their art collection because it was, it gave it space. It looked really nice. A lot of times, and I know I have a bar with a gallery, but I don't necessarily like it in those spaces because it's not lit properly and it's mm-hmm. not shown properly and it's not given the space that it needs, but it looked so nice in that space. Thank you, thank you. And so I was really happy to see it find a home. And, um, yeah, I mean, we met Tony as soon as he got back home and, and we've just kind of, you know, hit the ground running since then, and we've done a lot of cool stuff together. It is really only the beginning. I, I know. We just, yeah, <laughs> it's really pretty, just the I beginning. mean, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tony, thanks for coming in. Um, we appreciate bringing your piece up and showing it to us. I uh, appreciate all of your contributions to so many projects. Um, it's uh, you, we see your art everywhere now, and you know, a lot of it is really inspiring, whether it's on a wall or in a gallery or in a restaurant or in somebody's home. And so it's, it's been great to see your journey. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for supporting that journey, guys. Thanks, Tony. It. See Thank you on you. Friday. Yeah. Well, y'all see you on Love Friday. you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to welcome in uh, Ed Ehrman now. And uh, Ed is a former one time run employee who is become a muralist himself. So long time collaborator. And we've uh, yeah, we've done a lot of projects with Ed and he's really been instrumental in a lot of the mural projects. But I just love the, the direction of your art, Ed. Yeah, let's talk Ooh. about Ed's art today. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> all about Ed's <laughs> art. Happy to be here, guys. <laughs> let's show it. Let's show your piece, yeah, and let's, let's talk it about it a little bit. All right. So um, Beautiful. This one's called Sixes to Nines. Um, I always tend to, like, model my pieces after songs. So, like, when I got invited to this project, I was like, oh, man, motion. Like, this is going to be super sweet. Like, in a place where music lives and is, like, vibrant all the time, like, you can't ask for a better combination. So I was like racking my brain and like Holly and I were talking yesterday. I was like, what do I call this one? <laughs> um, I was like, what song do you call it? <laughs> right, yeah, the question was what song? It's not even like, what do we call it? Um, but I started thinking about it and like when I first started painting this, it was on its side, like perfectly square. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that's, you know, this is the normal way to, to paint a square painting. And I was like on my easel and I was like, you know what? Like what happens if I just shift this and it completely transformed it. Like the motion of the piece actually moved the way I was working Mm -hmm. on it. So I was like, Oh yeah. Changing my sixes to nines. Like just (laughs) flipping it. (laughs) So it like, it really, really worked. But, um, yeah, this is kind of like the direction I've been going is taking two dimensional elements and then using a three dimensional like object to like frame it. Uh, it really like makes it pop, and it, it's something that I've been exploring like quite a bit in my work recently. <laughs> We've got a dog that entered the frame. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry about that, and it really caused a, a slowdown in the conversation. <laughs> uh, well, so tell us about the recent murals you've been working on. Okay, I just did one in Windsor, in an, in Ontario. Um, I got asked by Essex County Black Historical Historical Research Society to do a mural for the like three sport athlete Fred Thomas 
and he was like basically the Jackie Robinson of Canada, like <coughs> broke down borders. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a part of the Harlem Globetrotters, actually beat the Harlem Globetrotters twice when he was in college. Wow. Mm. Yeah, so it was like a no-brainer for me. I, I grew up playing sports. I wanted to do something that like I was familiar with and like living in Detroit and experiencing like the racial boundaries, seeing like it day to day, uh, it was like really easy for me to like kind of put myself into the shoes and just be like, okay, let's do something that gives somebody their roses because they didn't get them when they were alive, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that's really great. And so with this piece, you're helping us install it as well. Yeah. Tell us what you've saw, uh, seen so far in this collection. Like, what is it, what is it, what have been feeling like working with this? You were here yesterday and mm -hmm. here today and we're kind of installing the show. Like, just walk us through it. What does it look like? Oh my God. So... <laughs> I, I'm pretty familiar with like everybody who's in this show. I mean, you you work in the city. I mean, just like Tony was saying, our our mural crew is just like so deep. Like everybody shows up. And it's not like, I mean, Phil Simpson came in yesterday and he was just like, everybody brought their A game. <laughs> like nobody wants to be shown up, but like you come in and you're like, here's my piece. And like, everybody's like, holy crap, look what they did. Look what they did. I think everybody took the word motion and just was like, I have my own interpretation of what this means and I'm gonna do it. Um, I didn't see a single one down there that made it look like, like it wasn't moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for nice. sure. Yeah. <laughs> In and every Ed, sense of Ed, the word. And Ed, um, you know, Ed is someone that installs all of our shows at Spotlight and helps execute all of our murals that we do through One Time Run and through Murals in the Market. And then in, there's very a few occasions where Ed is painting the mural and assisting the muralist. And Ed is painting a piece and then hanging the show. And Ed is a stack so, of hats. So there's and... always like yeah, there's like a stack of hats that Ed does. But Ed is really integral into like what we do here in regards to executing art, and has really kind of blossomed into this really amazing artist as well. We're very proud Thank of you, you Ed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember the day that you left one time, Ron, and it was like you're growing into something that was beyond what our four walls could do for you. And you became this mural painter and fine art. And, just, and your art continues to evolve. It's something that's very inspiring. We're, we love, I love the fact that these shows and the curation is so intentional to make sure that we include everybody. Hot to death, that was very cool, right? Like, what are they going to create? Oh, yeah. But your sentiment about everybody bringing their A-game is quite true. It's like, it's, this isn't just like, hey, I brought you a piece that I had in my studio. Everybody made something they made new something. for it. They made something, yeah, they did. Yeah. And that's what's so unique about um, a group show of this net magnitude. How many artists are, are in this? We're about at 70. There's a couple people that, due to manufacturing, whatever, might not might not be hung. Yeah, right around 70. But we'll be right okay. around 70 pieces for the show. We can get them in if it's a day after or two days yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, it's get fine. It. Yeah, the we'll show's up work. for two and a half months. <laughs> Dan? You got yeah. your piece ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not talk about it, Dan. Yeah, I just got back from a trip. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a couple days. Oh, uh, you think but you're going to make the deadline? Dan totally. gets a little bit of it. Dan gets a little bit of it because he helps hang the show, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lay it all out. All right. Well, thanks, Ed. Holly, really, you guys have done an amazing job. We're really looking forward to showing this collection on One Time Run. And it's going to, yes, that's what I was going to say. I was like, we are not, this is. Not all shows are um, put both on One Time Run's website and shown in Spotlight, but some are, and um, it's always a fun way for people that are not in Detroit to have an experience with Detroit art, and we'll do that for the show. And it's for a sure. great collection. You guys yeah. really did it. Did something yeah. special. They and the did artists it. came came they together did for it. This one deserves to be seen. Yeah, yeah. So. absolutely. They did it. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, this is Megabyte Studios. I'm Jesse Corey. Dan Armand. And we out. <laughs> Bye.